Good morning. Welcome to River Run. Here at River Run, we are going to start welcoming people to come in and be a part of our Sunday morning experiences once again. We have our CDC recommended signage. We have our hand sanitizer pump locations. We are allowing people to come in for Sunday morning watch parties, which will have people come in and basically watch the YouTube video that we've been streaming every Sunday morning at 930. As you come in, you'll have another hand sanitizer opportunity. We have face masks available for those desiring to wear them. We will have communion that will be distributed and contactless offering for collection. We also have all of our seating set up with uh, physical distancing in mind. All seating is set up in groups, and they are all six foot apart. The only difference is we won't be on stage right now, but we encourage you to come out, be a part of the congregation as we watch our Sunday morning YouTube premieres. Hope that you can make it next week. Good morning, River Run Christian Church. I'd like to dedicate our first song today to my daddy, who's in heaven. I know he would love to be here in person and worshiping with us, but um, this is about our fathers today. Our father in heaven and our fathers that are here on earth with us. Let's worship, let's have a wonderful time. Lift those voices loud, River Run. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been laid in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness Fire in 
darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been
jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind And mercy And all of a sudden I am unaware of these Afflictions eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so
Happy Father's Day. You know, I, I praise God for my dad. My dad, when I was a little older, uh, into my teenage years, my dad became a, a follower of Christ. And when he became a follower of Christ, there was a transformation in his life. And you could see it in everything he did, in everyone he came in contact with, and in my relationship with him. And my dad taught me many things. And one of the greatest things my dad taught me was how to live beyond your mistakes. My dad made mistakes, as all dads do. But he taught me how to live beyond those mistakes. And as a dad myself, I, I tried my hardest to live beyond those mistakes, mistakes that I made and mistakes I still make, as my sons would gladly attest if you would ask them. But my dad modeled to me what a man of God looks like and how he deals with others, how he deals with his loved ones, and also how, when mistakes are made, how to move beyond it. We live in a time right now where we need dads to step up. Our dads, our, this world needs strong, committed, and devoted dads that will pour themselves into their families and into their children so that they can see what it's like to be a man of God as God created him to be. Guys, what do your children see in you? What are you modeling for your daughters? What are you daily demonstrating for your sons? What do they see in you? Dads, granddads, uncles, even spiritual fathers who are investing their lives into other people's children. We need to stand up. We need to begin demonstrating God in our daily lives, demonstrating who we are and how God created us to be, because we are responsible for a new generation that will grow to become children of God and will lead the church and lead our nation and lead our communities and most importantly, lead our families into being followers of Christ. Will you pray with me? Father, I, I praise you for being our Father and showing us through your creation, showing us through your Son, and showing us through our brothers and sisters that we are around regularly, showing us what love truly means and what unconditional love looks like. Father, I pray for our dads. I pray for our grandfathers, our uncles, significant men that are invested in other children's lives. I pray that all of us are able to step up and become the men of God that you created us to be so that as the next generation grows and matures and become Christ followers, they have positive models and examples to follow, to fashion their lives after, so that they can become the men of God that their children needs them to be. Father, thank you. I praise you, and I thank you for our dads. And I pray that your hand be on them in, in difficult times so that they can guide and lead their children in your way the way. In Jesus' name, amen. I read a while back that probably the worst purchase you could make in 2020 is a daily planner. You know, why? Why do we even need a daily planner? Monday looks like Thursday, and Saturday looks like Tuesday, and Wednesday looks like, who knows what Tuesday looks like? Kind of reminds me of the song uh, by Chicago. Does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody even care 
what time it is. In my office, I have a desktop calendar. And typically, my desktop calendar every month is filled with events and activities and appointments. For just a couple weeks ago, I threw away April and May. Both of those months, not one thing entered in there. What's the, why? What's the use? There was nothing planned, nothing to go on. You know, when, when January 2020 came, I had a lot of plans for these past six months. I had purchased concert tickets. Mickey and I had made plans. We even purchased uh, trips to go on over the past couple months. But because of this little microscopic beast, everything we had planned for the past three months was canceled. We found out how tenuous day-to-day life is. When I began thinking about this message series, Lessons from the Lockdown, the very first thought that came to my mind was yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This message that I'm presenting today. This lockdown has renewed in me an understanding of how precious, how important, but also how uncertain today is. It reminds me of what James said in James chapter 4, verses 13 through 15. He says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will do this or that. There are three time periods in everyone's life. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday has come and gone. Tomorrow, it doesn't even exist. Today is all we really have. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today, today is our reality. Yesterday is instructive. Tomorrow is unknown. But today is the day that we live and we learn, and we love, and we laugh. Today is the tomorrow that we spoke about yesterday. So let's look at life through the lens of these three times, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And the first thing we need to do is look back at yesterday and learn. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul gives us a short history of the children of Israel, and very specifically about the exodus from Egypt, from bondage of uh, slavery that the children of Israel found themselves in, that Moses led them out. Now, Israel experienced firsthand God's power and his majesty and his guidance and his love, yet repeatedly they disobeyed and they failed to follow God's commandments. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, 6, now these things took place as an example for us that we might not desire evil as they did. See, there are times that we should stop and look back at history, and learn. See, when we are able to objectively look back at our own personal history, we can see our past failures and realize, well, that didn't work too well, and then strive not to repeat those failures. 
But we also can look back at our past successes and go, well, that worked great. Let me do that again and again and again. And prayerfully, we'll have the same results. But we cannot fall into the current tragic thinking that we need to erase our past, our history. We need to learn from our history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. See, history is like either an anchor or a wall. As you look back at yesterday and take lessons that you learned and use them as an anchor for yourself, then as Christ followers, we understand who we were apart from God's forgiveness, mercy, and grace. We understand that we are forgiven, we're redeemed. We have been saved by Jesus Christ. And this anchor keeps us secure so that we are not pulled in that current of thinking that we see today. This swift current of chaos and noise and destructive thoughts and the voices that are always present but occasionally as in now are prevalent but do not allow yesterday to become a wall that prevents you from moving forward In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, we read, Forget the former things. Do not ponder on the past. And the key word here is ponder. That's what really messes us up on a regular basis. The idea of ponder, it means to just keep talking about, to dwell on your past, such as the hurts of a spouse or a a boss or fellow employee or or a, a schoolmate, even hurts brought about by your parents. You see, some of you are unable to see the, the, the destiny that God has for you because you're stuck in your past. And more likely than not, it causes you to be bitter. But we're being challenged every day to move beyond the past, to move that wall so that you can see that God has promised us something even greater, bigger, better than anything we've experienced in life. Look back at history. Look back at yesterday and learn. And secondly, Look at today and see. Living today, being proactive and demonstrating God's word in in your life and living it, it causes us to deal correctly with the mistakes and the failures and the hurts of our past and able to deal with any of the forgiveness that has taken place in the past. We, we assume responsibility for our choices and our decisions, whether good or bad, but we also quit holding others hostage for their failures. We need to stop playing the blame game. God has forgiven you. You should also forgive others today. We need to stop living in the misery of memories and begin begin living in the love and the grace and the mercy that God today has shared with us. And then we share that love and that mercy and that grace with others. A couple months ago, I asked my life group a question And about this message series, I asked them, what lessons have you learned from this lockdown? And one of of the group answered in a way that just touched me. They answered, hold others closely, especially your loved ones. And then this person went on to explain that in three months, she had lost 
both of her grandmothers. And how looking at that caused her to look at those around her that she loves dearly. And she committed herself to begin loving more openly and more freely and regularly. Not only with those in her immediate family, but those that she is around rest, uh, regularly. As a church family, over the past three months, we have lost three of our beloved members. Shelley War, Audrey Evans, and Dot Bevins. We've also have church members, family members, who have lost members of their family, and some of them because of the COVID. And so while it is today, let me challenge you to make the best of your time and your opportunities and your resources for the kingdom of God. Just as Paul tells us again in 1 Corinthians 10, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Seize today, carpe diem. Look for those opportunities where you can do good, where you can do good all the time for all the people as often as you are able. Don't let today determine your life. Let your life determine today. Take a look at history yesterday and learn from it. Look at today and live through it. And thirdly, look forward to tomorrow and hope. God is faithful. We can trust Him and depend on Him. We don't have to worry about the future because God is already there. We can't predict a future. We can't see a future beyond what God has already revealed to us in His Word. But the picture He paints for us about the future that lies ahead is one of hope for all followers of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Peter instructs us, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Let fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. If we have no hope for tomorrow, we have no power to live today. And hope's not just wishful thinking. It's not unreasonable expectations about what is going to happen. Hope is a, is a secure confidence, a certain expectation based on not what we want, but on what God promises Hope sustains us when we are in need. Hope strengthens us when we are weakest. Hope lifts us up when we are at our lowest. And hope comforts us when we're crushed. And hope comes only through one person, Jesus Christ. And as Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, Jesus in us is the hope of glory. Look back at yesterday and learn. Look at today and live. And then look forward to tomorrow and hope. God sent His Son to this earth to offer us forgiveness and grace and mercy, and He's looking to give it all to us. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we already have it. We live in the glory of His blessings and promise. And if you are outside of Jesus Christ, first let me tell you, I praise God that you are with me right now. And I pray that the Holy Spirit moves in you as you listen to this message. I want you to understand that God's hand is reaching out to you right now, today, He's reaching out to you 
and offering you life. But not only a mundane, everyday life, but life to the fullest so that you can begin living in God's glory and in His blessings and promise. And if you would like to begin making this spiritual journey to become a follower of Christ, I would love to sit down with you and help you and begin walking with you on that spiritual journey. We need to understand, and I'm I'm sure I'm not telling you something new, but the world around us is constantly changing. Every day, the sands of time are bringing about change, but as followers of Jesus Christ, we stand on a firm foundation because of the one who never changes. As the Hebrew writer tells us in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus gave his all yesterday, and he offers it all to us today, and he will reveal it to all of us tomorrow. Pray with me. Father, I praise you for the ability to learn from our mistakes, to look back in history as as individuals, also as collectively. We can look at our failures, we can look at our successes, and based on what we learn from that, we can grow and become better, become mature. And ultimately, by seeing your son as, as given to us in the, in the gospel records of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we can understand our history as followers of Christ and build our lives upon the foundation that was given us through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I praise you for today because now we have the opportunity to live for you. We are able to every day wake up in the glory of your nature. And we are able to express the love that you have poured into us to the people around us. Every day we have these opportunities. And Father, I praise you for the tomorrows that are yet to be. Because in those tomorrows, we continue to have opportunities, but we live for those tomorrows with the hope of what ultimately lies ahead for all of your children, and that is life eternal with you. Yesterday, you died for us, and you rose again. Today, you are constantly pouring yourself out for us through your Spirit. On a day-in and day-out basis, demonstrating your love for us and encouraging us to share that love to those around us. And Father, tomorrow, your Son will come again. And with open arms, he will greet all of his children, all of us who have been blessed by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray we learn, I pray we live, and I pray we hope as we only are able to hope through your Son, Jesus Christ, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. As we've been talking about lessons from the lockdown, I wanted to sneak kind of a uh, mini lesson in for communion here. I hope that during this time of being at home with families that we've taken advantage of that time, that we've actually spent time together around game boards, around puzzles, more importantly, around the dinner table. You know, that sense of 
gathering around a dinner table, kind of the leave it to beaver family model that you would have, has kind of escaped our current culture. And I hope that as a family, you've taken the time and created a new habit of gathering around the dinner table with you and your family every evening. You know, gathering around a dinner table is what the early church did on a regular basis. We read in Acts 2, starting in verse 42, they were devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Reverential awe came over everyone, and many wonders and miraculous signs came about by the apostles. All who believed were together and held everything in common, and they began selling their property and possessions and distributing the proceeds to everyone as anyone had need. Every day they continued to gather together by common consent in the temple courts, breaking bread from house to house, sharing their food with glad and humble hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number every day. As an early church, they would gather together regularly for common meals, meals that would satisfy everyone's physical hunger. But part of that common meal was always a remembrance of the Lord's Supper. Always a time to gather around the table together, to break bread, to remember the body of Christ that was given for that church, for us, for our church. The blood that was shed for each one of us for the forgiveness of sins. It was a habit that the early church had. It's a habit that we have here at River Run. And I hope it's a habit that you have with your family too. Let's pray. Father, I am so grateful that something as simple as a meal is what you decided that you would have represent your son's sacrifice. Because eating a meal is something we all do. It's something we do on a daily basis. But to actually take time and stop around elements of a meal to remember your son, to remember when we break bread of any kind about his body that was given for us, that when we drink, that we have the opportunity to remember your son's blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And God, I pray that we are all looking forward to the future day when we get to share in that meal for real with you around your table in your presence. We look forward to that day. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen.
I'm really glad that you were able to join us today. And what's really cool about the technology is it doesn't matter when you're watching this, it's today. But I look forward to the tomorrow when we are able to finally get back together and worship together as a family of God. Now, as I mentioned in the message, if you wish to talk to someone about beginning your spiritual journey and becoming a follower of Jesus Christ, I encourage you, please, go to our webpage and click on the Contact Us button, send us an email, or comment on Facebook. Let us know, and I would be more than glad to sit down with you and help you work through your spiritual journey. Guys, happy Father's Day. I pray that you have an incredible day and that you are blessed beyond all measure by your family and those close to you. Have a great week. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow.